Good morning and good evening and a warm welcome to one and all of you my dear brothers and sisters. I want to thank you that you are dedicating your time to listen to these short videos and uh, I also strongly believe that you have been sharing with some of your friends, some of your colleagues and continue doing that. Be the light to the world to share his precious word. A warm welcome to this short session where we are dealing through some subjects which are quite important and uh, not ignorable in life you have to consider certain principles if you are living your life without any principles without any doctrines without any guidelines and are not abiding in the laws and commandments you are missing a large portion of truth in your life right and that's a reason why you end up in disasters you end up in problems you end up in lots of losses and some of the losses are really tragic that you cannot you know fix it it's gone you know um, and I don't want to name what are they but you know the in your life right and uh, it's also a sluggish spirit that is in you it is also a lazy spirit that is reigning in you and you need to really get rid of that the way to get rid of it is to be grounded and rooted in the word of God nothing else if you are grounded and rooted in the word of God means you are meditating in the word of God allowing the word of God to travel in and through you and the word of God will refine you. It will separate the carnal deeds from your spiritual deeds, uh, deeds because it is a double-edged sword. Right? And it will definitely pierce your heart. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 4.12 says that. And that's why we always encourage you. Please subscribe. You will get automatic notification. Do not miss on this video. You will not get another chance to live your life on earth. Right? This is the only chance. The one life. Live it and be with God after your life on earth. You, there is another life waiting for you. So don't miss that. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, a topic which is very much needed for every one of us to be aware. Do not ignore the counsel of the wise or do not ignore the counsel of God. Right. So what is this counsel? Counsel is nothing but advice. Counsel is nothing but guidance. Counsel is nothing but solution for your problems. Counsel is nothing but you are approaching some people because you are going through certain difficulties in life and you want a deliverance, you want a solution, right? And that's the reason you approach certain people. But then how do you know that person is wise or that person is, you know, a, a person who is filled with stupidity or maybe he is like a half-cooked vegetable, right? Sometimes he may, you know, talk right, sometimes he may talk absolutely incorrect. Now, how do you trust in that human being? That's the biggest problem all of us have, right? Now, if you definitely know a person for sure, he is worthy enough to advise you always. And he had definitely guided you in the past, um, all the 10 times, you know, in the right pathway. Then there can't be a person other than the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one who can guide us. And the Father in Heaven is the one who can admonish us, who can nourish us with the right guidance because he is the God of the truth. And he is the one who can see the future. He can foresee the future. And he is the one who can lead us in the right direction. Which no human being can do. I, that's what I am trying to tell you. It's going to be a mixture of uh, you know, correct and incorrect uh, guidance. I mean to say, sometimes they might guide you rightly. Some, and most of the times they may guide you incorrectly. Some people wantedly they do it. And they are, from, they are the agents of the devil. Because they want to see the downfall. That's political attitude. Correct, no? Now here we are going to talk from the book of 2nd Chronicles uh, chapter 10 and verses 1 to 18. I won't be reading the entire chapter but I will be picking few verses. Here we are going to talk about Rehoboam. Rehoboam is the son of Solomon. After Solomon's death and Rehoboam went to Sekim for all Israel had gone to Sekim to make him king. So it happened when Rehoboam the son of Nebat heard it. It was in the Egypt where he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king that Jeroboam returned from Egypt then they sent for him and called uh, him and Jeroboam and all Israel came and spoke up uh, Rehoboam saying your father um, made our yoke heavy right um, and spoke to sorry it's not Jeroboam it's Rehoboam uh, I, 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 I do get confused with the name Rehoboam right now this guy gets a chance to sit in his father's throne the first thing is for you to identify if you are approaching any human being for help be sure if that human being has got experiences in life 
don't go by the person's family background don't go by the person's uh, you know legacy and all that that will be a biggest foolish thing that that you might end up uh, doing right you don't go by the background but you look at the deeds of the person is this person experienced enough to guide me is this person experienced enough to have that partnership with me in the business this is how you got to judge and most importantly on the spiritual angle you always have this partner his name is father in heaven abba father right you don't have any you don't have to have any other partner but in this world when we live we got to deal with human beings right and that's important for us to judge this person is uh, uh, this person is a good example jeroboam is a good example jeroboam is the son of solomon and he had no experience he had no experience in politics he had no experience in kingship he no had no experience in anything and he's not a spiritual person either right first of all solomon also started very well and then he big backslid and he had started to worship all the pagan idol gods and he never died as the servant of god like his father david so this guy never learned his lessons from neither his father grandfather david and his father solomon just like that he gets an opportunity he barges in and he barges in putting his trust upon others or who are those others um, your father made our yoke heavy that um, now, now therefore lighten the burden some service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us and we will serve you now the elders of israel have gathered and come and told that see this guy solomon no full of wisdom and i don't think using that wisdom he did good to with the people of god right he made the tax reformations he made all this kind of uh, reformations out of his wisdom which people could not even understand ultimately they earn little and the entire earning is going in the form of tax all hidden taxes that's what you see in many countries correct no that's called as you know the uh, intelligence um, uh, or i would say that's called as you know kind of cruelty in wisdom right and uh, solomon was an expert in that that's why riches kept on you know uh, overwhelming in this uh, regime and it's nothing but plundering people's wealth uh, not, not in the direct way but through the indirect way at the end of the day these guys had no savings they couldn't buy property why because they don't know where the money is going just like that the money is going so he was a, he was brilliant in the tax re- reformation rules and uh, now they realize this after um, they realize that some change will have to happen and therefore we need the change we deserve the change then they are coming and asking his son your father burned burdened us he had cast a yoke on our back and we had the pain we couldn't do anything fruitful or we did not enjoy any the labor of our um uh, the, the 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 labor the of our hard work we never enjoyed the fruit and wine that we earned and that was the problem so he said to them come back after 3 days uh, and the people departed then afterwards i will cut short i don't want to read the entire thing there are two sets of people who me decides to consult which is there is nothing wrong in that you can always consult people but then make the right decision after you consult and for which you need guidance of the father in heaven that's where he misses first the first group of people he pick was the people who worked with his father solomon elders they have lot of experience they had lot of experience in dealing with such matters and they given an advice you know what um and they spoke to him saying if you are kind to the people and please them and speak good words to them they will be your servants forever and this was the right advice right always you be kind to the people you be responsive to people's problem don't act like responding but you are truly responsive to the people's problem they are definitely going to be your bonded servants this is the advice they gave and this is true and practical even today also right when people come to you with a problem you need not solve all the problems in day one that's not the expectation right but if you are able to address one or two problems out of 10 problems then you are giving an assurance that in this likely manner i am going to address all the remaining eight problems you build that confidence and trust in people this is something you will hear as a, as part of your people management uh, role if at all there are managers listening to me as your manager program right training program they will teach you this you know how you can win the trust of your team you got to start resolving problems in smaller thresholds this is exactly what these guys are telling him but you know what he was an idiot because he had no experience that's a problem right then you lack an experience you definitely need to talk to many people to gain that knowledge and experience there is nothing wrong but at the same time the final approver 
of the decision you make must be the father in heaven because he is the great of the greatest he is greatest in all on all seasons at all ages in wisdom and he is the one who can foresee the future and he is the one who can pick the right thing you can go and uh, tell god i have 10 options to resolve this problem tell me which is the right option rehoboam sorry jeroboam had no knowledge in making the choices and secondly he is not spiritual at all to seek the father in heaven he lacked in both these things are you learning certain principles right now what happens is but he rejected the counsel which the elders had given and counseled the young men he, he rejected means he made a decision right this these old guys know they won't be suitable for me he went to the young men who grew up along with them and these guys are giving an advice like this um, thus you should speak to the people who have spoken to you saying your father made our yoke heavy but make it uh, lighter on us that you shall say to them my little finger shall be thicker than your father's my father's waist then now whereas my father put a heavy yoke on you i will add to you to your yoke my father chastised uh, sorry ch- uh, what is it chastised you with whips but i will chastise you with scorches i am going to wound you even more terribly just wait and watch you will know who i am is he such a stupid fellow and the bunch of guys around him were also stupids right see it's again another principle that you can learn is make the right choices as your companions or the make right choices when you decide your companionship right it's not about numbers i have so many friends in life do you have one wise friend or all of them are stupids like you right you should really really look back i have seen many people in my life they are very very happy and proud i have so many friends wherever i go but you know what none of these guys helped none of these guys would lead them because why they themselves are sitting like this guy right and i have seen after so many years also that they never improved in their lifestyle and they have been you know kind of going downwards and i've always seen them ultimately uh, you know losing on everything they are losers they are not made losers but they decided to be the losers this like like this guy he decides to make a choice which will make him lose things he will not gain anything because why the kind of advice he picked was this why because this guy was influenced uh, negatively because he grew up with bunch of these guys and he definitely wants to hear what he wants to hear you understand this clearly right when you go to the father in heaven and talk to him in the name of jesus do not squeeze your agenda inside his palm do you know please answer this for me and then why are you even consulting the father in heaven you made your choices i heard this from many many christians i want this therefore i am asking god to do this no please don't pray like that you place choices in front of god and ask god to fulfill what he desires and ask god to make that choice what he thinks is the right thing for you because he is the only one who can look for our foresee what is suitable for you and what kind of future is predestined for you unless and until you come into this realm of involving god in fact if i if i were jeroboam i won't even go to any human beings i'll go to the father in heaven solomon did the same thing he went and prayed in the initial stages he was very much intimate with god and he was praying to god god i seek your help and guidance god appeared to him in a dream and said that you know i grant you wisdom and the kind of wisdom i give you no one else will have that kind of wisdom and along with it i give you riches for free and until his last breath he had that peace he had that wisdom only thing is he didn't have the presence of god because he backslidden he had been carried away with many other uh, rituals he started to take uh, women from jebusites and canaanites and he married all the people because the guy didn't want to fight battles wherever Uh, you know there is a kind of an enmity building he will go and get married uh, the uh, you know that king's daughter or something then what happens he becomes that king's son in law they can not fight with the relation right so like that he was managing and he thought that's the most wise thing to do but he violated the commandment of god right he might be filled with wisdom but he used it for worldly matters but not for spiritual matters therefore according to me he was not the wisest guy he was a, he was the most stupidest uh, he, he was living in stupidity um that that's all i can say if you are not uh, you know well versed in spiritual wisdom then obviously your worldly wisdom means nothing it will take you towards the bottomless pit for sure therefore i want you to really think through this uh, we will close with this right now what was the end of jeroboam you can read the second chronicles it was a disaster he was not successful 
he failed in that council he built a lot of enemies and there was no peace he lost his throne right ultimately god brought his enemy uh, to that place you know uh, rehabam and all the story you can read in second chronicles see ultimately god will make his choices right you are not listening to me now, then why should i really appoint you in my company correct no i run a company and i appoint you and i want you to do certain things in my way and you say i will not do things in your way i will do according to my own desire and my own plan why should i even keep you in in in, in job and role i will fire you god fired him and he brought someone else who will listen to him so remember that always right you don't pay attention to god's voice god is not going to be patient all the time some 103 verse 9 says that i will not strive with the spirit of man forever neither will i hold my anger forever there is a limit for even god to hold his patience god to hold, be merciful and compassionate right do not always look at the word of god some 145 and 9 says that i am bound to compassion slow to anger slow to anger bound to compassion there is a limit for that compassion and that anger correct no so be very careful please no please do not lose your position uh, just because you paid attention to the wrong counsel the only person who can give you the right right counsel the right guidance he is the father in heaven always seek his face your face will be filled with radiance and shame will not cover you bible says in psalm 345 we'll close with that may god bless you subscribe to our channel please get access to all our playlists share it with your dear ones near ones and please you have to pray for our ministries you are my praying partner in other words we are doing this ministry together therefore i need your support in praying continue to remember me every day 10 seconds close your eyes and you pray for me that's enough god bless you namaskaram vanakkam